And a very good afternoon to you and welcome along to Board Namona O'Connor Park at Tullamore in County Offaly for live coverage here on Pundit Arena of the Celtic Cup Challenge Cup Finals. And what a day of hurling is going to be here. We're starting off with the Corn Tom Hogan final. And it's a meeting of two Midland rivals in Leitrim and Longford. Indeed, a Leitrim team and a Leitrim County hurling scene that has been buoyed by the success last weekend of the senior hurling team being victorious in Crow Park. And of course, they're taking on their near neighbours, Longford, today. It promises to be a very, very interesting and entertaining game between these two teams. Well, the two teams at the moment out on the pitch. Longford, as you can see, they are going through their final warm-up uh, talks here, their final warm-up procedures completed, and just getting the final pep talk from the team management. They've got a number of injuries coming into the game. There's Leitrim, managed by Hilary Phelan today, a former Leitrim goalkeeper himself, and indeed was part of the management team in Crow Park last week. So he's had quite a, a busy week here when it comes to hurling, not alone at senior level, but at underage level as well. Now, there's a check on the two teams that are lining out. Brian Goldrick, the Leitrim goalkeeper. His brother, Stephen, came on last week in Crow Park as a substitute and played a vital part in that Laurie Maher Cup success for Leitrim. In front of him in the full-back line, Shane Rin from the Carrick Hurling Club is an experienced full-back. Paul Linehan at centre-half-back is another player they'll be hoping will complement the midfield duo of Connor Hackett at eight and Shane Mallon in nine. Plenty of talent in the forward line as well. Rory King lines out at the edge of the square. Cormac Kane is a chief score getter as well for this Carrick team. So they'll be hoping that there'll be plenty of scores coming their way throughout the 60 minutes. Who knows? 60 minutes plus maybe in this game to decide where the title is going. Well, it's a Longford team that have their injury problems coming into this match. They've been forced into making a couple of alterations as well to the uh, starting 15. But watch out for players there such as Shane Courtney from the Wolf Tones Club. Indeed, just two clubs, Wolf Tones and Longford Slashers, dominating the selection. Erlet Dolan at centre-half back has been a player who has been in fantastic form. So too has Donald Sheeran, another Longford Slashers man in the middle of the field. A lot of the scores today are expected to come from full forward Connor Leonard. He plays at the edge of the square, number 15. Liam Brown, there were some injury concerns about him before the start of the game and indeed the two Murrays, John and Stephen, the Murray twins, expected to come in 16 and 17, expected to be introduced to the starting 15 the players who may make way will be number 10 Adam Connaughton and also number 15 Liam Brown, there's the management set up, Hilary Phelan as we said, a former Leitrim goalkeeper, Ray Kelleher, Niall O'Reardon, Stephen McManus, another former Leitrim player, Amy Phelan, and Carl Murray, who's got so many family connections to this Longford team. She's the manager there. She's a little bit worried about the players that they're missing for the start of today's game. But at the same time, Robbie Stakelham, another former Longford hurler himself, will bring plenty of experience uh, to that team. So the, so the two teams, Marissa, just at this stage now, lining out behind the uh, the band here in Tullamore. It's a big day for these young gentlemen, and I presume at this stage now they just want the, the formalities to end and the action to start. Absolutely, yeah. We're looking forward to a great day here at Borden and O'Connor Park. Two very well-matched teams, uh, two counties that you would often associate with hurling, so it's fantastic to see them both here in an all Ireland final and, and to play for silverware. Talk to me a little bit about the conditions here today when we arrived early this morning. It was absolutely lashing down rain at one or two stages, but thankfully it's uh, it's broken into a fine day here. Little or no wind to report of as well, just looking at the flags down by the sidelines, so that should be all conducive for, well, good, constructive and hopefully high-scoring hurling today. That's what we're hoping for, yeah, and the pitch here in Tullamore is in, in great condition, I must say. A uh, little bit of rain earlier on, so it might be a little bit slippy to, to start off with, uh, but hopefully the conditions can stay dry now. And as you said, the wind had a, a huge impact in the final, in the semi-finals in Ashburn last week. So we're hoping not uh, for a replay of that. Just when we look at these two teams, and we touched on the success of the Leitrim Senior Hurling Team last week in Crow Park in the Laurie Maher Cup Final. A lot of that success has been attributed to this particular competition in the past, uh, where La Leitrim have really gathered momentum. And something similar for Longford as well, maybe at senior level operating in a slightly higher grade. But the two teams have placed huge emphasis and huge value on this particular competition in the past and they'll be hoping again that some of these players that we're seeing here in the parade will be representing them in the future. Absolutely, yeah, you mentioned earlier on that all the all the Leitrim team are actually from the Carrick Hurling Club so it, it, it is basically a club against the county team uh, but they have been 
you know, really competitive throughout this competition. And now they have a chance to, to show what they can do on, on the biggest stage. And as you said, seven players who actually came through the Celtic Challenge were in Crow Park last, Sunday, last Saturday. So it just shows what this competition can do for these players. Well, Leach have en route to today's final. They had matches against uh, Donegal, then they had a walk over the Galway tribesmen. They also took on near neighbours Roscommon, a match against Mayo as well, a high scoring encounter against Mayo, 4 12 to 3 13 that finished. And then they had a, a game against Sligo before playing Cavan in the semi finals for Longford. Well, they're short, as we mentioned, a number of players for this particular game. Players unavailable include Michael Mulcahy, Christopher Faherty, John or Jim Crossan, and Patrick Crossan, unavailable for this game, but they've got plenty of talent in that Longford uh, starting 15 as well Adam Murray their top scorer so far is definitely a place to keep an eye on the goalkeeper by the way Daniel Gallagher has been in magnificent form right throughout this particular competition and keep an eye out as well for Stephen Murray he's one of the players that's certainly going to have quite a lot to proceedings the team's breaking away at this stage now from the from the band and getting ready for the action to start off here the referee for this uh, particular final by the way is going to be Matthew Farrell uh, and situated smack bang in the middle of the two counties of Roscommon native so he's going to be taking charge of this particular final here one of the things and you witnessed it last week in the semi-finals we've seen some brilliant individual uh, pieces of uh, skill some brilliant individual performances uh, right throughout the course of the competition so far so really here in the home of Hurling and Offaly in O'Connor Park let's hope that continues today yeah we've seen plenty of skill throughout the competition and no doubt we'll see some more today well, the two teams, as we mentioned, getting ready now for the start of this game, all in positions, all good to go at this stage. Referee just checking to make sure that everything is OK to get proceedings underway. Midfield, the possession for or the battle for possession is going to be absolutely vital there right throughout and he throws in the ball and away we go so the first of the finals gets underway here already you can probably see there from your pictures Connor Leonard the full forward for the Longford team has moved out into that midfield area it's a move that they've managed to do a few times right throughout the course of the competition but there's an opportunity for Cormac Cahan diagonal ball in early on towards the Longford goal mount but that one goes out to the left of the post and it goes out wide first opportunity and interesting to see as well I suppose well numbers in the modern games means very little and a number of positional switches but the two teams putting a lot of emphasis on the throw in yeah absolutely you saw Leitrim fighting hard there to win possession just probably took the wrong option there there was no one to collect his pass but here they come again Ashley Mazea is one of the players to keep an eye out for he's got possession early on here tries to break that 45 meter line he's going to go for a score this will be some confidence builder oh it's a beautiful strike he sends it all the way over the bar and Leitrim have hit the front here it's a good effort from him that uh, sailed in there and uh, certainly that's a well a promising start there for the uh, for the Leitrim team they lead by one point to no score absolutely and even with the size of this pitch they're using the space very very well and brilliant score there again Leitrim really cleaning up on some of the primary possession at the moment and they've managed to work the ball into that full forward line once again they're really uh, creating chances here early on and they've got a second opportunity and they've got a second score again the ball worked in there when you see Cormac McQuite and forwards like that in round the edge of the square always possibilities for them yeah Cormac Cain uh, at, at, uh, at corner forward is proven a real handful to deal with then that's two possessions uh, he had a chance there earlier on threw it off to, to Cormac White this time over the bar well, it's really all about Leitrim here in the opening couple of minutes. They've raced into a two-point to no score lead, but Longford will know there's a long way to go in this particular match. Connor Leonard, well, he's playing at 14, but uh, the ball that he's been he's manages to drive down there to his forward line, who have been starved of possession so far, is immediately sent back up the field. Irlet Dolan from the Longford Slashers Club sets an attack in motion. Longford deciding now that they're going to run at this particular move, and it's uh, Donald Sheehan who breaks deep into the Leitrim half of the field, but Leitrim's defensive structure has been hugely impressive so far. Connor Hackett read that particular situation very well indeed. Ball eventually works out here towards Adam Connaughton. He's going to try and have a go from distance. It's an almighty effort, but unfortunately the accuracy not there. It's just drifted out to the left of the post and wide. Well, at this stage, we've only played two and a half minutes, but I presume Longford could do with a score just to settle themselves down a little. Yeah, they just seem a little bit nervy. Uh fighting hard to, to win possession great run there by Donald Sheehan but uh, turned over easily by Connor Hackett in the end Brian Goldrick's puck out lands in towards that midfield area once again where possession is a little bit untidy at the minute Fergal McLaughlin was the man who eventually got it up there for Leitrim down again there uh, towards the Leitrim full back line it goes and that situation was well read by Thomas McDebolia he's a 
talented wing back loves to get forward loves to contribute to the attack gets it into Ashley Mazea once again making plenty of good positive starts here Connor Hackett long ball down to the inside forward line it's a tactic Leitrim like to use Longford were aware of it on this particular occasion and Daniel Gallagher the Longford goalkeeper gets his clearance away Donald Sheehan makes himself available there on that far side Good ball down again, but the Leitrim full back line and the Leitrim full back in particular, Shane Rin has started the game very well. But just having said that, they've lost out in possession. Here's a chance now for Adam Murray. Looks to make inroads. He's fouled there by the Leitrim cover as Murray was really put the head down for the first opportunity in the afternoon. Troubled the Leitrim rear guard, and maybe that's the best success Longford have enjoyed so far is when they run directly at Leitrim in those 50 50 battles. Leitrim are coming out on top thus far. Yeah, absolutely. Adam Murray is going to be a very key pit player for, for Longford today. He's 15 years of age. He's playing in his first Celtic Challenge competition, but he's six foot two. He's going to be a key man to win possession. And as you can see, he's their top scorer and, and is well able to take over and points like that. Just to emphasize that, he sends that one in and between the posts and it's Longford's opening score. Just shy of four minutes gone and Longford now are up and running. Two points to one in favour of Leitrim here. It's been a bright start. Two proceedings in Board Namona, O'Connor Park and Tullamore. The puck out taken once again. Some more possession here for Adam Connaughton. There's an opportunity to trouble the Leitrim defence again. Quickly closed down, but he's got support off the shoulder. It comes there in the form of Adam Halpin. Halpin just finding it difficult or Longford at the moment to get control of possession. Adam Connaughton very close to the sideline. We've seen some wonderful pieces of skill in the semi-finals last week from players in positions such as this, but it's very tight, it's very tense, but coming away with it there is the Leitrim wing-back, Fergal McLaughlin. Positive start from him to the game so far. Here's Niall Crow. Quick delivery down again to that inside forward line where Leitrim are showing well in the early exchanges, but the Longford defence beginning now to somewhat come to terms with the early onslaught that they've been experiencing. Once again, it's Connor Leonard wearing 14, but dropping into an advanced position out the field. Long relieving clearings down again towards that uh, full forward line. But just talk to me about the amount of possession there that Shane Rin has picked up so far in the game. But again, Leitrim have managed to, to lose that one as a second opportunity here for Longford. Again, the ball is sent in and again it's sent over the bar. And I tell you something, if they give uh, space to the likes of Adam Murray and Co down there, Leitrim will live to regret it. Good score there once again. Yeah, initially a great defence by Leitrim, uh, by, by number five, Fer Fergal McLaughlin. To, to overturn Adam Connaughton here on the wing. Adam Connaughton has been enjoying great possession down there, so they're going to need to keep him bottled up. And it makes it two points apiece now. The team's level here at two points all at this stage. We played five minutes and 39 seconds here in the opening half. So right now the ball breaks down there once again. Leitrim winning some more possession. Played back out here again to Connor Hackett. Connor Hackett once more. Leitrim with that two-point lead has uh, quickly evaporated and the teams are level. That's a dangerous ball dropping in down on top of the Longford goalkeeper. But again, the referee has uh, spotted the infringement inside. Well, it's in interesting to see what's going to happen from this. It's going to be a puck out, obviously, the infringement taking place there in round the goal mode. But Leitrim, who started well, well, the defence under a little bit of pressure so far. And it's interesting to see that Adam Murray is having a, a big influence on this game as it progresses. He is, yeah. Both sets of forwards, I'd say, definitely on top. Leitrim looking dangerous every time they get that ball down there with their full forward line, uh, Rory King and Cormac Kane. They've been really influential so far. Yeah, puck out taken short once again. Ball gathered there by Adam Connaughton. Leitrim have it back, however. Opportunities here for them now to attack with Ashley Mazea once again trying to make that incision into the Longford defence. But again, it's going to have to come back out here towards uh, the Leitrim wing forward. Niall Crow. Niall Crow decides to use his football skills to play that one into the full forward line. And it might work out. It was a dangerous effort. The shot eventually came in there from Rory King. Well, they have to be content with a 65. It was somewhat unorthodox the way that they managed to get the ball into the forward line, but the go Longford goalkeeper called into action. Yeah, it was nearly as unorthodox the way he saved it as well with his foot, but whatever way works. <laughs> yeah, for sure, and it's certainly making it a, an interesting and almost compelling viewing here. Here's the replay coming up, and that's how it went out there for the 65, the free or the 65 for the Leitrim team. You might notice that the balls they're using today is yellow. It's a special ball uh, designed for the Celtic Challenge. Yeah, and very distinctive indeed. And indeed, that's sent in and all the way over the bar. Excellent score there by Shane Mallon. His first of the afternoon and Leitrim regained the lead. It's three points for Leitrim. It's two points for Longford now at this stage. And we have played just over seven minutes here in the opening half. So Leitrim leading three points to two. Possession again in round the centre of the field. Somewhat untidy. 
Players converging in there for it. It's won back there by the uh, Leitrim team once again. They're all having, I suppose, purple patches at different stages here when it comes to primary possession in round that midfield area. And it's Leitrim with their noses in front. But a huge way to go in this game, yes. Yeah, we talked about it before the game. That's going to be a key battle in the middle of the field. We've seen it's fairly crowded so far. But uh, Leitrim definitely enjoying the better of the possession. Once again, Shane Mallon is going to be the player to take this. He's got the black helmet on. Facing down here once more, and an opportunity for him maybe to increase Leitrim's lead a bit. It's an opportunity for water bottles to be put on as well. Quite humid, quite hot here. Ball pucked in there, falls short again. Ashley Mizea almost on the end of the move. Gets the secondary possession, looks to make that little bit of space for himself. Quickly closed down by the Longford cover, but he did well to, well, create an engineer, a scoring opportunity, and drops it in over the top. And once again, it's gone out there to the goalkeeper's right and wide. No doubt about it, he's a player that uh, Ashley Mazea have been watching this guy at underage level, both hurling and football, coming up a hugely talented sportsman. Absolutely, himself and Ernest Dunn are, are having a great battle there at the back, uh, but Mazea definitely is, is, is showing all his skills. Yeah, he got that opportunity there and really certainly made a, a lasting impact into it. So we're at this stage played just over nine minutes, the bare minimum separating the teams. Leitrim enjoying some possession once more. It's their wing forward, Keen Farry, who gets forward this time. That's a dangerous ball in there that's been pucked out and sent back in and sent to the back of the net. And it's a goal there for the Leitrim team. And I think it may well have been Cormac quite maybe that uh, got the finish to it. Well, let's take a look at the replay. It was a, a dangerous ball that dropped inside. Longford were at sixes and sevens. Uh, initially trying to clear it and it was finished into the net and here's the replay coming up well just watch for this initial ball coming inside there dangerously so and yes finished in to the uh, goal by Karma quite goal for Leitrim you could say maybe an opportunist goal but well taken absolutely I'd say that Keane Farrell's probably going for a point there but batted out by the goalkeeper and great follow up from White and their tails are up at the moment, they're on the attack immediately again and Shane Mallon has added to that goal with a point of his own and all of a sudden now Leitrim go to one goal and four. So it's Leitrim 1-4, Longford 2 points. It just shows the way how quickly a game can change from having restored parity a few moments ago. Longford now find themselves with a bit of work to do. Yeah, Leitrim's tail is definitely up now, so Longford just need to settle themselves back down. Here's Owen McLaughlin. He's just been introduced as a sub, but again, he lands that uh, percentage ball in there once again towards the edge of the square. But the, that could be certainly something that uh, Leitrim might be targeting. Whether they perceive maybe there's a lack of physicality in that Longford full back line or not, I'm not sure. But they're uh, definitely content to drop the ball in and let the backs and forwards fight for it in there. And it's been a fruitful tactic so far. Yeah, the goalkeeper has been busy so far. But um, Irla Donan again on, on the ball here. He's been fantastic so far. But they need to, to get the ball down quicker. Get it to the likes of, of Murray and Connachton, who we know can do damage. Connor Hackett to McLaughlin. Back to Hackett again. Look at the space he's created for himself. Just didn't make a problem proper connection on the shot again as it drops short the Longford defence had some defending to do there well they're missing a number of players for this game but one man they're happy to have there is Shane Courtney from the Wolf Tones Club and there was that ball dropping in there dangerously and just finished into the back of the net brilliantly by the Leitrim number 13 Cormac White a goal for him a day he'll remember that's the substitute's bench yeah, so it's in fairness going to be important to the today that they use it well, isn't it? Yeah, in fairness to the Longford goalkeeper, Daniel Gallagher, he's been very busy so far, has made a few uh, vital saves, but it just didn't see that one coming. Leitrim beginning to win some more possession again. Fergal McLaughlin has started the game so well. So too has Shane Mallon. Dangerous ball dropping in around the edge of the small parallelogram once again. The break is going to come out to Kean Farry. Kean Farry's confidence is flying at the moment. Just can't provide the finish there. But the Longford full back line, well, I'm not sure, and it's not a tactic I like to maybe uh, encourage, but they might have to try and maybe consider putting a sweeper in there because Leitrim are hitting them, reining in the direct ball inside, and Longford are struggling somewhat on it. Yeah, Leitrim are using their space very well. They're working way out to the wings. Farry is going out wide and it's really pulling the, the long for defence and it's just really working well for Leitrim at the moment. Niall Crow was the latest player who was going forward there but the referee has decided to call it back. Matthew Farrell from Roscommon, the man in the middle today and it's going to be a free out for Longford and a chance for Irlet Dolan maybe to lift the siege a little bit that Longford have been under here. Hard to believe we played over 12 minutes in the opening half. Leitrim leading. 1-4-2. to two. It's been a, a good start here for Hillary Field inside in Bordenamore and O'Connor Park and Tullamore. But Longford have the potential to get back into this one. Adam Murray may well be the man who might lead the charge of the Light Brigade. And just to emphasise that, look at that for a score. One of the best of the match so far. The direct ball played in. He got the little bit of space, provided the finish. That is poetry in motion. That's absolutely brilliant from, from the 15-year-old in his first year of the competition. 
Uh, and that just shows if Longford can get the ball down there, he's able to find the space. He came all the way out uh, to his own half forward line to win that ball, and he's just stuck it over. It's 1 4 to 3 points now at the moment. Longford moving up to 3 on the scoreboard there, so they have uh, increased their tally a little bit. And right now, the ball back there with the full back again, and that's well gathered by Shane Rin. Rin pucks the ball forward. Good play from him in that full back position. Again, they're going to try and hit the forward line. If Leitrim get into this particular sector of the field, they've got players inside that can cause damage. Cormac White, goal scorer, dropping this one in dangerously inside to the corner forward. Here's Cormac Kane, plays it back to the midfielder once more. The puck coming in from Shane Mallon. Goalkeeper able to deal with it, deflects it out. But again, it's all originating from the direct ball down to the full forward line. And once it was won inside, the latest attack just coming in here on the replay. That dangerous dropping ball. Again, Leitrim winning the primary possession. Watch there for the corner forward Cormac Kane who played it back to the midfielder Shane Mallon and there was the shot that has been deflected out for a 65 so certainly Leitrim getting quite a lot of enjoyment from that as the Longford management team ponder what's going on in front of them here at this stage yeah the it, movement of the Leitrim forwards we saw White coming out the field to, to win that possession and then it was not Shane Mallon who went inside so they're constantly moving and they're just pulling that Longford defence everywhere yeah, I think it's an excellent point that you're making. That movement is troubling them so much. The Longford defence, that is, in the bright sunshine now. The latest ball dropping in there dangerously, but has come back, I think, off a combination of upright and, and crossbar. Comes into the grateful arms of the Longford full forward, Rory King, who gets a shot in. Still, it's kept in play here. Good play and persistent play by Cormac McQuite. The angle a little bit acute, so he's forced out the field. Leitrim still are going to play the diagonal in around the edge of the square. Again, that tried and trusted tactic, but unable there to make the proper connection was Rory King this time and it's gone out at the expense of a wide well there's Hilary Phelan long serving goalkeeper for Leitrim in his own career indeed his late daddy Paddy who uh, his late dad Paddy who came from Kilkenny played such an integral role in Leitrim hurling for many long years so the teams at this stage now getting the opportunity I suppose to get water bottles on and there's no doubt about it it's quite warm out there and the two teams are serving up a good fair so far yeah absolutely there might be clouds overhead but uh, the temperatures are certainly rising both on the field and in in the sky. Yeah, it's nicely poised at this stage. We've just gone by the opening quarter. Here come Leitrim once again on the attack. It's uh, once more Owen McLaughlin who has made considerable inroads there looking to try and maybe find Rory King. Now this might sound a little bit bizarre but in some ways maybe is Leitrim's tactic getting an almost a little bit like predictable that it's going to go into the full forward every time. It is, yeah. They seem content to, to, to leave either King or, or Cormac White inside. Just leave one player inside and get the ball to him and they're not content taking their, their points from long range and they've hit a number of wides now so, yeah. so they just need to settle like, down again there's another example of it again the ball played in there around the edge of the square but Longford slowly but surely as the game progresses are beginning to come to grips with that particular tactic that Leitrim well you could argue maybe have over deployed in the opening half so far but it is going to be a free for them there's some more movement down on the sideline Phil Hillary Phelan the Leitrim manager just warming up one or two more players but there's going to be another free here for Leitrim and Cormac White once again, is going to be the man to take it. Yeah, should we should probably say that there's unlimited subs in, in this competition. So that's why you're seeing so many changes throughout, especially in, in temperatures like this. Cormac White taps in the free and taps it over the bar and Leitrim increased their lead a little bit here in board Namona, O'Connor Park and Tullamore. White with that latest score for them. So that lead moves Leitrim to 1-5 on the scoreboard and three points for Longford. You're quite right, the, all the changes taking place, unlimited changes, I suppose the best way we could describe it. In many ways, it resembles the international rules that Ireland and Australia play, and you can make all those interchanges, but I think it adds to the, the excitement and the enjoyment here, and it gives players a, a time out from time to time. Leitrim, I think, have moved uh, their full forward, Rory King, in towards that midfield area just to see if they can continue to get a stranglehold on possession there in that particular sector they've won another free for themselves a player who has impressed me hugely here has been Owen McLaughlin since he's come in he's been fouled and that's going to be another free here for the Leitrim team and an opportunity for them maybe to stretch out the lead a little bit more yeah, Longford need to start being careful because we know uh, the impact Cormac White can have from place balls. So he's going to knock them over all day uh, if, the, if, if Longford don't get their discipline under control. And Cormac White is going to strike this one from the 45 metre line, as you can see from Canberra shot there in a very central position. 
in of course from Cormac Quite and he taps that one in and taps it over the bar it's another point for Leitrim they now lead by 1-6 to 3 points interesting to note and there's a huge contrast here between the, the flags on the sideline and those behind the goal the tricolours and the respective colours that, uh, of the various teams competing here it seems to be getting a little bit stronger and would maybe slightly suggest that Leitrim have the aid of that breeze in the opening half Slightly, it's kind of more coming across the field, but it definitely it's, it's aiding Leitrim ever so slightly. Yeah, it's so. somewhat diagonal at the moment, diagonal breeze at the moment, but it might be just a little bit maybe in Leitrim's favour right now. Longford, important for them to keep the scoreboard ticking over and stick in the game. Adam Murray, inevitably, is the player who is going to go across there to take it. His team finding themselves in a somewhat difficult situation here in this particular encounter so far. Dear neighbours, Leitrim and Longford, these players will be very familiar with each other from challenge games down throughout the years at underage level. Not alone in hurling, but in football as well. Adam Murray strikes that one in. Huge delivery on how this guy is a special talent and he's just nailed another one. That's absolutely brilliant. It's worth the admission for you, Lowen. Adam Murray, with him and your team, you've always got a chance. Absolutely fantastic. From out near the sideline in the 65, brilliant, brilliant score. And it just shows that Longford have the, the, the dangerous forwards if they can get the ball up, but they're just being starved of possession at the moment. You're so, so right. It's just that lack of possession. They're living on scraps in there, but they're giving us so many indications what they can do. Well, at least Adam Murray is giving us so many indications what he is capable of doing definitely the marquee forward in this Longford team thus far and it's another free coming in here for the Leitrim side an opportunity for them to lift the siege a little bit about them the tempo of the game maybe dropping ever so slightly here that's probably down in no small part to the well challenging weather conditions the heat out there at pitch level so again it's going to be a free here once more for the Leitrim side and again it's going to be there Paul Lenehan So Linehan preparing to strike this one off the ground. Doesn't maybe make the best of connections, but in any case, it works out kindly for Leitrim. Shane Mallon, head down, making the move once again into dangerous territory. He goes and he gets a shot in. Well, it's gone over the crossbar for a moment or two. It looked as if it might have just dipped under the bar and caused real problems for the Longford goalkeeper, Daniel Gallagher. But Leitrim have to be content with the point. Yeah, absolutely. Shane Mallon has been seriously impressive in this first half. Another searing run through the, through the middle. They, they just can't cope for them at the moment. 1-7-4 to four the score at the moment. They're mounting up now at this stage. Just that Leitra beginning to get some more possession of the ball. Pucked in there again by Connor Hackett. The accuracy not there this time from Hackett. Well, they've created numerous opportunities in the up the calf here at Longford. And when they seem to get on top, they are able to sustain that midfield dominance, it seems, for quite some time. But the, the accuracy will be a cause of concern. Yeah, they're leading by six points now at the moment. So they do have a comfortable cushion. But we know Longford have the ability to come back into it. So Leitra need to be taking all of their chances. There's no doubt about it this is their purple patch if they can finish them off here once more and they get the ball inside to Cormac White and White has made that little bit of space and you referred to him earlier as being a prolific scorer he's just got another point for Leitrim they lead 1-8 to 4 Cormac White is somebody who's caught your eye absolutely and, and Owen McLaughlin then the substitute setting him up um, they're working really really well they just have that that connection and even though there's movement everywhere they're able to find the space and get it to the man in the best position which is key and once more, that break in possession in the middle of the field favours Leitrim once again. It's been a, a good spell for them here. Concern on the Longford uh, faces, the Longford management team, their faces down in the dugout as they try and get themselves back into contention here. A concern will be how their full-back is dealing with this high ball. And there's another aerial challenge about to be launched here by Shane Mallon in the middle of the field. I presume he's going to have a go. Maybe it's a... Well, he might have a go at probably putting it over the bar, but the chances are in every likely prob probability it could drop in around the edge of the square he struck it well he's going for a score there's no doubt about it oh, that's a huge effort and what an effort it was and what a score it was Shane Mallon well that's long range free taking at it's very best yeah we were talking earlier on saying that uh, Leitrim's attack was, was too predictable and they all of a sudden they've just mixed it up they're going for their points uh, and, it, and it's brilliant to see yeah, they probably needed to do that. They probably needed maybe to just add that extra string to their bow and have a little bit more options from the attack. Well, if they've got long-range free-taking ability like that, it certainly increases their chances here. Connor Leonard wearing 14 for Longford, but he's been operating 
deep for the majority of this game in inside there to Dean Wikes the midfielder finding it difficult to get any change out of this Leitrim defence at the moment and Shane Mallon once more is there to win the ball and immediately sends it down to the forward line race develops here for possession Jeremy O'Donnell goes back there the Longford corner back to try and protect the situation wins a free out for his team well that's interesting the fact that Leitrim have the ability to take long range scores they can also mix it by playing the direct ball into the forward line whereas at the other end Longford are really struggling to win any type of primary possession yeah just look how far out uh, Shane Mallon dropped to, to win possession back there totally unmarked no one anywhere near him was able to, to, to pick out his corner forward inside and, and luckily for Longford uh, it, it, the decision went the other way. One goal and nine to four points at the moment. And, uh, well, it seems like a glorious day here on board the Bona or Connor Park in Tullamore. But uh, certainly the quality of the hurling, the level of the excitement has been uh, fairly good so far. Fairly enjoyable for the huge crowd that are watching this particular final. Movement as well on the Leitrim substitutes bench. They're going to be very shortly, I presume, bringing in Ashley and Bezea. It's interesting to see the way that Hilary Phelan is uh, deploying the players that are at his availability at the moment. Meanwhile, Mallon has another free and again this one drops in and again it goes over the bar. Well, they're certainly creating the chances from freeze and from play. They've moved up to 110 now to four points. It's a healthy the lead and you know something Shane Mallon there from long range freeze prolific yeah absolutely and it just shows that Longford are going to be, have to be really careful with their discipline and there we go again yeah and that discipline and I'm sure is going to eventually lead to the referee maybe taking a little bit more action it was Connor Leonard who was in the heat of the battle there once again and it's a yellow card that the referee is brandishing to the Longford number 14 so Connor Leonard is the player who picks up the warning from the referee and it's going to be another free for Leach from all eyes once again here on Shane Mallon what a game he's had so far he's been very much uh, to the fore of Leitrim building up a healthy advantage here and Mallon dropping this one in it's going to well go out to the right of the post and wide again I'm not sure if the wind is what seems to have dropped in strength is having any major factor in it by the way Leitrim have brought back in their number 11 once again Ashley Mazea he's come back into the Leitrim attack yeah it's very it's very clever use of, of, of the bench by Hilary Phelan he's not letting any player get overtired out there and he's bring, able to bring on fresh legs constantly then yeah it's always good maybe to be able to use them as many players as he possibly can at his disposal we might have some defending to worry about no over at the far side and one of the I think the well the, the talisman in the Lockford and the Leitrim attack there the number 14 who was a threat around the edge of the square Rory King has been benched for a while meanwhile it's McLaughlin who has this huge effort dropping it in towards Mazea who had just come back on he's operating now in the full forward line something different a different type of challenge for the Longford lads to try and contend with here as uh, Leitrim once again try to make hay while the sun shines and the ball played down again towards their corner forward Cormac White White trying to work his way through there Longford again having plenty of players back in a defensive formation you just get the sense that they feel at this stage that they need to stay in the game until they get into the sanctuary of the dressing rooms at half time five minutes away from that at the moment Leitrim leading 110 to 4 points and would really cap off a remarkable week for Leitrim if they could win this title here today I spoke to Hilary Field and the manager just before throwing it was one of the things that he said that part one of the, the double was completed last week but you can really sense the emphasis that they're putting on the Bank of Ireland Celtic Challenge Cup as well yeah, you could see how much the win in Crow Park meant to everyone in, in Leitrim last last week. Uh, and here we know they, they put as much emphasis, as you say, on the Celtic Challenge because it has produced so many key players for them and it just shows the importance of the competition. Absolutely, it's a competition that they value so much down in Leitrim. So too do Longford and they are on the attack once more. They're going to try and get some joy along the flanks now as Adam Connington sets another attack in motion but again it's there to Shane Wren he's read so many potentially dangerous situations all afternoon he's been a, a key player for Leitrim back there dealing with this one is Tom McNabolia does well the number 7 plays it into that midfield sector once again where it's poked forward here by who else already Shane Mallon dangerous one in round the edge of the square breaking ball once again who is it going to favour here little bit of a battle developing for possession still could go anywhere comes to Mazea possibilities for him gets it onto his left side possibly his weaker side and a comes into the grateful arms of the goalkeeper Daniel Gallagher who has a chance here to set her a restarted motion and he was fouled and it's going to be a free out 
Leitrim substitute studying the situation fairly carefully here. They know they've got a huge 30 minutes to come of action in the second half. But I suppose the one thing about this uh, particular Leitrim team, there's a lot of, I suppose, of, well, different variations, especially when it comes to attack. Yeah, we've seen them mix it up in the past few minutes and it has worked wonders for them. Mazea has only been back on the pitch for, for a few minutes and he's really brought that physicality back into the forward line. Here's Keen Farry, lovely run from him over on that far side. Again, let's fly with the shot, but again, the accuracy just not there. You, you sense to have the beaten of their markers in a number of positions here at the moment, Leitrim. Maybe if they were encouraged to carry the ball into a, a maybe more advanced role where they could maybe have a, a greater percentage of converting chances to scores. Yeah, in terms of pace and physicality, they're dominating, but uh, they're just taking the wrong options at times, uh, especially when they have forwards open inside who can win their own ball. Yeah, well, Longford now have the opportunity here to try and get something watering before half-time. Earl Dolan decides to carry this one into enemy territory, plays it in there to a forward line that have been living on scraps for the majority of this game but they have players such as Dean Wikes inside manages to recycle it back out here to Irlick Dolan once more dangerous one from him dropping in there that Longford are going to try and keep and play they managed to succeed in doing that but it breaks to Thomas Magnabolia whose positional sense again was good did well to read that situation here's Keen Farry look at the shift he's putting in in the warm conditions here in board the Mona O'Connor Park defending at one end attacking at the other Leitrim now looking to maybe get some more scores themselves here before the interval Shane Mallon has been immense for them all afternoon but Longford have overturned possession Adam Connaughton now direct ball from Longford this time down to the forward line breaks kindly inside once more but again it's uh, Leitrim who have players back there with Fergal McLaughlin the two Leitrim wing backs have been deployed in interesting positions not alone are they defending well but they're the launch pad for so many attacks in the game so far and here comes uh, Owen McLaughlin once more McLaughlin really made a, a poor attempt at the finish but it might work out okay in the end as it's pucked in and over the bar and Cormac quite was the man who benefited from it well the first shot was missed hit but it fell kindly for Cormac White and he was more than happy to take the point. Yeah, Owen McLaughlin's pace has just really been utilised well by Leitrim picked up that ball in, in, in midfield and great run in uh, yeah, uh, we've Connor, got. Le Connor Leonard probably could have done more to stop him there. Here's McLaughlin again. He's coming along to the, the right flank this time. Leitrim enjoying so much success when they attack Longford at this particular moment in time in the game. They've really built up a good position for themselves, leading by 111 to 4. The ball played in again by Shane Mallon. Finds McLaughlin. Here's possibilities now for McLaughlin. Just gets the shot in. Oh, never really made the proper connection. And it just drifted out to the right of the post and it drifted out wide. Well, I suppose they're, they're still young guys. Their technique is developing all the time their skill sets are developing all the time and you can just probably see that in one of the two of the last incidents of play that we've seen there yeah you could see from his reaction he was disappointed with that he knows he can do better uh, and we have seen what he can do on the ball so more uh action taking place at Longford are bringing back in their number 13 here as well Dean Crossan who had uh, taken some time out for a few moments it's all about the interchange here we're almost into injury time at the end of the opening half and possibilities once more here for Leitrim again as they played the ball down inside there to Cormac White ah that's brilliant that's sent in and dispatched beautifully over the bar Leitrim at this stage now move up to one goal and 12 to 4 points well they can be fairly happy down at the subs bench their colleagues and comrades on the field are really doing the business for them here at the moment puck out taken again we're into injury time now at the end of the opening half a half that has been dominated by Leitrim in the main has been suggested on the scoreboard Board. and right now they're going to look to hammer home the superiority Shane Mallon he's got a player running off the shoulders the Leitrim number 20 who's in there now Paddy Kane Paddy Kane managing to transfer the ball outside him the free player momentarily was Cormac McQuite hits the deck tries somehow to recycle it but good covering back there by Connor Leonard for Longford Connor Leonard comes away with it looks to well somewhat fortunately break the Leitrim cover and he's won a free good individual player from Connor Leonard and I suppose he's wearing 14 but he has no opportunity but to drift back and help out a defence that have been overworked you could say yeah dare I say he's playing a sweeper role there at the moment but you need to because these the physicality of this Leitrim full forward line is so impressive they're well able to win their own ball in there and when you have Shane Mallon pushing up and, and action as the seventh forward you know Leitrim needs that or Longford need that help back there and once again it's Adam Murray who decides to when he hit one or two monsters so far but these, this one is out of his uh, range a little bit Again, the ball breaking there, players punching on it. It's somewhat difficult to get it under control there for Longford, and Leitrim are going to capitalise on that, and they're going to break here once again, deep into the closing stages of the opening half. They've got a, a fairly hefty cushion at this stage. 
15 points to four now at this stage and again the ball is broken kindly here for Shane Mallon 45 meters out distance no obstacle to this man oh what about that for a score the way he got control of the ball the way he set up his body angle for taking the strike that was beautiful I tell you something this Shane Mallon he would probably get on a number of teams here that we'll see in some more of the finals later on absolutely he's a he's a player to keep an eye on for the future but you have to question the space that he's been given in that midfield when you know a player is that dangerous to, to, to not close him down it, it's um, it's very questionable no doubt about it Leach have benefited so much from the direct ball as well down into the forward line at different stages the goal was crucial in the game at this stage it seems that Longford have a long road back yeah nine points in it or no, my math skills aren't great now there's uh, 12 points in it now uh, so you know the game is is floating away from Longford but we know uh, if they can get the ball down but they're just being starved of possession in this midfield area we saw them push up in the in the final 10 minutes of the game and, and try and win possession in that area but they're just being physically dominated by Leitrim at the moment and there's no doubt about it the two sets of management teams have used the game so well yeah we've seen the use of subs from both benches throughout and you need that in these humid uh, humid conditions we've seen water uh, they're all going for the water straight away so that'll just tell you how tough it is to play in this kind of heat uh, but fair play to them all they're, um, they're, they're using their bench well and, and it's working out well for them OK, well there we leave it for half time. The two teams deciding to stay in the, well stay out of the under the sun here for their team talks. There's about a 10 minute break here. We'll be back in about five minutes from now. But at half time here in this final, it's Leitrim in a commanding position. They lead against the Labour's Longford. It's Leitrim 113. It's Longford four points. Second half commentary to come.
So we're about to get underway here with the second half of today's final. Leitrim in a very good and commanding position at halftime as the referee throws in the ball and away we go in the second half. Gets underway here in Bordenamore, O'Connor Park and Tullamore. Straight away Leitrim deciding to go on the first attack in the second period and the ball pucked in there along by Shane Mallon. Interesting to note as well that they've uh, decided to deploy their centre half forward in there, Ashley Mazea. He's on the edge of the square, a player who has been substituted during the opening half but has come back on to great effect in a new position. Leitrim starting brightly. Once more, it's Niall Crow here with the direct ball in again dangerously and Gallagher can't keep it out and his frustration tells there it's a goal for Leitrim right at the start of the second half. The initial ball in not dealt with well and there to finish it off was Cormac White another goal for him it was that direct ball played inside here to the Longford goalkeeper well you have to feel sorry for Daniel Gallagher he did well initially to try and control the situation just took his eye off it and the Leitrim corner forward is there right place right time great start for the second half for Leitrim a second goal yeah classic corner forward play there to follow the action into the square and just pick up uh, the loose ball unfortunately for Gallagher he just dropped it at the wrong time 
and uh, and and White was there to to follow it up. Well, we've got another replay coming up on that goal. What a dramatic start to the second half here as the ball was sent in by Niall Crow. Watch the goalkeeper here. Just took his eye off it at precisely the wrong moment, and you can't do that with players like Cormac White hovering with intent, and he was there to slot it into the back of the net, and that now leaves the scoreline two thirteen to four points. Is it an unassailable lead? That's the question that's going to be asked here by the supporters of Leitrim and Longford now at this stage, and once again it's Leitrim who are enjoying so much of the dominance at the moment and the goal scorer turns provider now as he plays it in there once more towards the direction of Ashley Mazea just lost his footing there precisely the wrong moment but the Longford clearance has gone straight out over the sideline and you can really see it as opposed to Longford confidence is rattled at the minute yeah worst possible start to the second half for them uh, initially you know from from the throwing we saw Shane Mallon what he can do and it was just typical that he was on possession but then you know they hit the short ball in they hit a wide so it, it looks like we're going to see more of the same ball played in there once more again by the uh, Leitrim midfielder Shane Mallon but Longford now with so much defending to do Ali Akubal manages to get the ball away here for Longford he's been introduced to try and well stem the tide a little bit Dan Cross and plays it into space here once more but well read by Fergal McLaughlin and I have to say the two wing backs for Leitrim have impressed me immensely throughout the game not alone from a defensive perspective but also from the amount of attacks that they've launched throughout the game as has Shane Rin been rock solid the number three now getting the license to come forward and look at this for a Sally deep into enemy territory now can he provide the finish he's going to drop it in there once again dangerously so and uh, again they had the player inevitably in round the edge of the square but uh, Longford lived to survive on this one well there was question marks asked about the, the Longford defence right throughout the day with that high ball dropping in round the edge of the square and again it paid dividends for Leitrim but it's a tactic I'm sure Leitrim are going to use time and time again Yeah, Jeremy O'Donnell has a big battle on his, on his hands there at Mazea because his physicality has just been really well utilised there yeah, it's been a fantastic start to the second half here so far from a Leitrim perspective, but Longford not finished yet. They need a catalyst, something to get them back into contention here right now. But again, uh, they're getting no change there out of the Leitrim defence, and Shane Rain again is the man who comes away with it, gets a long clearance over towards this near side of the field, racing in here now to gather it for the Longford team. Ali Ikeba, lovely ball down again there towards that forward line, but again it's well cut out here, and it's one of the aforementioned players there from Leitrim, Fergal McLaughlin, who comes away with it, links up inside here with uh, the number 23, Owen McLaughlin, drops this one in short once more, gathered and taken well by Cormac White, he's been a constant torn in Longford sides, but this time it's gone out to the lift of the post and has gone out wide, I love the movement of the Leitrim team from defence to attack, there's a very swift transformation there. Yeah, that was brilliant team play there, uh, starting off with Fergal McLaughlin up to Owen McLaughlin we've mentioned him throughout the first half he's been fantastic since his introduction unfortunately Niall Crow just couldn't get to finish that time Kieran McMorrow is going to be introduced very shortly for Leitrim as well he's going to be wearing number 24 but again uh, all the play continues with Fergal McLaughlin over on the far side now the angle is acute there for a long range effort and that goes in and drops in across the face of the goal and it's out wide at this stage and once more the Leitrim management team using the opportunity to throw players in and some of those guys in the Longford bench just wondering when their moment in time is going to come here. All eyes on Daniel Gallagher, the Leitrim goalkeeper, or the Longford goalkeeper from the Longford Slashers Club. His best experience in the GAA so far has all been through fail. Uh, Connor Gallagher states as one of his uh, favourite county senior players who unsurprisingly plays in goals for Longford. But it's Leitrim again who are on the attack here once more. And again, this ball is gathered by Connor Hackett. He makes so much space for himself on the field, linking up with uh, Shane Mallon. Shane Mallon is an absolutely terrific hurler, but the effort here has just gone out to the lift of the boss and it has gone out wide. But interesting to see the chemistry that's in the middle of the field there Connor Hackett complimenting Shane Mallon very well yeah we're five minutes into the second half now you can see the confidence streaming through this this Leitrim team they're both wing backs moving forwards constantly but worrying enough for them that's their fourth wide in five minutes so they really just do Leitrim as well need a score to settle them down yeah just the scores coming inside Liam Brown once again Good play here inside from the Leitrim corner forward there, and Leitrim uh, number 23 there, I should say, Owen McLaughlin. 
Again, they've dropped it in, but Longford have won a free out for themselves here. A bit of uh, defensive duties for them to do. 2.13 to four points, and I suppose for Longford are only five minutes into the second half. It's how you keep going and keep that individual pride there for the remainder of this game. It'll take a huge effort to get them back into it. Yeah, that goal was a huge blow to Longford, but you can see that they're, that they're both cornerbacks are kind of getting to grips with, with, the, with the danger of, of Mazea. They're kind of cutting out the ball before it gets to him, and uh, it is been pretty effective at the moment. Cormac Kane, once Longford seemed to come to terms with one potential match winner for Leitrim, another seems to pop out and over. But again, as you mentioned there, and rightly so, the Longford defence are coming to grips with it, but they've been hooked there. They've lost possession once more. It's another chance for Cormac Kane, and it's going to be another free in for Leitrim. It's interesting to note about the Leitrim team, different players have stood up to the plate at different stages here when they needed them. Yeah, absolutely. And it just shows the way the bench has been used as well, because everyone who's been introduced uh, is, is, is really they're making their mark and, and they're saying I want to start I want to play on in this game once more it's going to be the aforementioned Cormac White who is going to take this free in a central enough position for him between the 45 and 21 metres lines he's a player who has been uh, well epitomised accuracy so far in the game Rory King the big physical full forward is going to be introduced very shortly again as another one makes its way in and it, uh, another effort there for the uh, Leitrim team yeah, another free from Cormac White. So that's Sumford Long, something Longford's going to have to be very aware of is their, phys, uh, is their discipline because they can't be giving him opportunities like that to widen the gap. So once more, Messiah is the player who was coming off. It's something, a tactic that they used fairly well in the opening half and Rory King has been brought back into the mix there for the uh, Leitrim team as well. So at this stage, Leitrim in a good position at the moment. Having that fairly healthy advantage for themselves here at this particular moment in time. And again, the ball works its way down here towards the inside forward division. Ball gathered once more here by the Leitrim number 15, who Carl McCain has worked tremendously hard all day. So too for Longford as uh, Ali Akubel, who has worked uh, his socks off there to try and bring his Longford team back into contention here. But they're just finding the difficult going uh, a little bit tough at the moment, but still not giving up by any manner of means as Adam Murray, a player that we're expecting so many big things from here in the second half. His first real opportunity to get on the ball. Again, he's looking to engineer something there and trying to get a, a away from his marker, but the whistle has sounded from the match official. Again, it's going to be another, another free in for Longford. Yeah, Adam Murray is just really standing up in this game. He's really just taking it by the scruff of the neck and saying, I'm not going to go down without a fight. He came all the way back to his own half-back line to win possession there and was really having to, to fight to keep hold of it. But interestingly, no Longford player was making themselves available for him. It's another long-range effort dropping in there dangerously out over the line. It goes and wide. Another possibility there where Leitrim were converting those in the opening half, but just unfortunately not able to take them in the, in, in the second half. So it remains, 2.15 to 4 at this stage. The puck out of the restart taken very, very quickly indeed. Ball breaks in behind the heads of everybody there. Adam Murray, the player to capitalise on it, decides to land this one back with interest. Reining in on top of the Leitrim full back line, and there might be possibilities here for Stephen Murray. Murray, one of the players introduced just before the start of the game, plays that diagonal ball across the face of goal. Still there's possibilities there for Longford. John Murray, the two Murray twins combining. John looking to try and get something on the edge of the shot, but again, it's good defending there from Leitrim, but Fergal McLaughlin is able to scamper the ball free. It was Annie Port and a storm at that stage for Leitrim, but again, they live to survive that potential impact and the ball again being picked up over there on the far side by Niall Crow back in the defensive duties for him now plays it to the Leitrim centre half back Paul Lenehan upfield it comes here to Owen McLaughlin McLaughlin looks to see who was available off the shoulder but well anticipated again by Ali Kiral but again the ball is broken away somewhat from him and it might break kindly here and it comes to Cormac Kane and Cormac Kane is moving in with intent and gets another shot in and dispatches it high and over the bar well, really, at this stage, Leitrim uh, taking some fine scores. It's that direct ball. The Longford management team shake their heads. They've just struggled to combat Leitrim's directness in the game plan all afternoon. What a phase of play that was from one end of the field to the other. Up on the Longford end, you know, the, the Murray twins, as you said, really key in there. But uh, kudos to the, Lim er, to the Leitrim defence because they just cut out the, uh, the ball before it got in. One McLaughlin again from the sideline cut. 
gets it away there secondary possession coming back to the, the team in green and gold again and well read by Thomas McNabolia skillful hurler played inside here to Shane Mallon has to be a real contender for man of the match he was hit late on the ankle as that ball was being played away well it's maybe a sense of frustration creeping into the Lanford defence there more than anything else it was Mallon who has been really I suppose pivotal in Leitrim's success all afternoon fouled as he was getting that one away there's just a little bit of a late impact on it the referee I don't think is going to well I'm not sure he might take some retrospective action he's checking the notebook there only player that's gone in in the yellow card so far will be Connor Leonard but he was well away from the situation there the Longford or the Leitrim man in question still receiving treatment and I suppose Shane Mallon down injured just out of camera shot at the moment but a player who has uh, certainly made a huge impact for Leitrim right throughout the course of this game yeah, he's been unmarkable. He's covered every blade of glass, grass on the field. Um, but it just shows the frustration for Longford. They had their one best effort there down the other end of the field and it came away as a Leitrim point. So they're going to be hugely frustrated. The heads have just dropped a little bit. And as you said, that was just a, an act of, of frustration there. But Brilliant. Thank, thankfully, Shane Mallon is all right. Brilliant camera shot there as the Leitrim free is about to come in from uh, Cormac McQuite and Cormac McQuite dispatches it over the bar and Leitrim moved to 2.17 now on the scoreboard. It's been a very emphatic scoring performance here from them and again the puck out is going to come from Daniel Gallagher. Gallagher sends it over to the far side, does well to link up with Adam Murray, who's their go-to player here, but can he lead any sort of Longwood revival here in the closing stages of this game? Ball picked up here once more by Dan Crossan on the far side. Crossan, surrounded by two Leitrim players immediately, goes to ground, and that's going to be a, a free in there for the Longford team if they can just get something motoring here. 42 minutes in to this particular encounter here in Bordnamona, O'Connor Park and Tullamore, a clash of uh, two teams who would be fairly, fairly familiar with each other, Leitrim and Longford. It's the team with blue and gold have it all to do at the moment. Ball dropping in again. But uh, really, there's a lot of the cohesion gone out of the Longford game plan at the moment. And that's well picked up and well read there again by Paul Lenehan. The Leitrim half-back line have hoovered up so many Longford attacks right throughout the game. And now there's that tr transformation that we spoke about as they quickly get it into Owen McLaughlin. Owen McLaughlin to Shane Mallon, thankfully recovered from that knock that he picked up just a couple of moments ago. But he gives possession away here and an opportunity for Longford to launch an immediate counter-attack. That's gone down into the forward line. But look at that brilliant play inside again from the Leitrim full back line Rin going up one handed made the catch you know something that's a, an art form and a skill that we don't see in the game too much but it's brilliant to see it being executed in that manner absolutely and just a second ago we saw Shane Mallon been hooked so we know Longford aren't giving up either brilliant brilliant skill throughout the game Donald Sheehan look at this for a run from him he's got left the Leitrim defence for dead still Donald Sheehan getting away but just a shot lacked the conviction or lacked the, the explosive power that we've seen in the run just a couple of moments ago and Leitrim again somehow their defence are able to deal with the situation and again it's Shane Mallon back there and they've won a free out well that was a real pity for Donald Sheehan his run inside the Leitrim defence the pace of him there left the Leitrim defence for dead unfortunately just couldn't execute the defence but what can you say? What else can you say about Shane Mallon to go back to his own full back line to win the free? The, the, he's just been fantastic for Leitrim, really stood up, and he ha and he has made the difference in this game. The physical threat of Porrick Kane, the Leitrim number 17, will be coming back into the mix again here shortly. The Leitrim management team, led by Hilary Phelan, have really used the substitutes bench so well. Longford are making a number of uh, changes here as well themselves as they look to try and get themselves back into a position where they can maybe mount a challenge late on here. They've brought off their number 16, Longford. Uh, Stephen, or John Murray, he has come off for a while. Plenty of movement on the Leitrim bench as well as they look to try and see this one out. Well, once more, the uh, puck out is going to come here from the Leitrim goalkeeper. Brian Goldrick has played well, has handled any situation that has come his way so far. His brother Stephen on the Leitrim team came on as a sub last week in the Laurie Maher Cup final against Lancashire. A game where Leitrim forced extra time and eventually went on to win it. And here they come now with Niall Crow, a player who has got so much potential in his locker. Again, the ball breaks kindly from a Leitrim perspective back to Crow it comes looks to get it away Connor Hackett second time of asking good delivery from Connor Hackett good pressure from Longford as well that's gone out to the lift and wide yeah it's been one the one downfall of, of Leitrim's play today has has been uh, their shooting they they work so hard to win possession they pass the ball to the to the man in the best place but they just um, a few bad wides now today so once more Leitrim on the attack and again the ball driven down inside there by Thomas Magdabolia. Dangerous went into that Leitrim inside forward line again. They've 
created so many scoring chances from situations like these and here comes Cormac White has been a potential match winner all afternoon and he's got another score Cormac White again capitalising on that direct ball it's so difficult to mark players like that it's so difficult to try and control guys like White when they get opportunities they bang them away absolutely yeah from both place, place balls and from open play he's been fantastic so far he, he is their main threat in the full forward line but it's the forwards around him that are creating the space to allow him to take the to the shots as well. 50 or 46 minutes played here in this encounter now as Leitrim in a very commanding position. Two goals at 18. They lead to four points against Longford here. A tour de force by Leitrim in the second half and they've got the opportunity now to empty the bench a little bit in the second period of play as well. They've decided there to uh, withdraw the services of Cormac uh, Cain for a few minutes just to give him an opportunity to sit it out for a while and again it's pucked inside by Shane Mallon there I don't think they're going to take this guy off despite that particular finish just gone out slightly to the lift of post but you have to have full appreciation of somebody who backs himself from those situations who shoots some distance absolutely and I think he slipped as well just after taking the shot so probably not steady but uh, he definitely had the distance just look at this here once more. Leach about the attack once more and deciding to use the boot there on that particular occasion was Fergal McLaughlin. Just went out to the right of the post. Not something we see happening that terribly often in the modern game, but at the same time, I suppose you can see the, the footballing skills of these guys come into the fore once or twice as well throughout the match. Yeah, Fergal McLaughlin has been so prominent in the second half. We've seen himself and the other wing back just moving forward constantly and, and try, you know, fair play to them for trying to take their scores. Cormac Lyons was the app, or Connor Lyons rather was the player who was fouled there for Leitrim. It's going to be another free in here now for them. Once more, they're quite content maybe just to slow it down ever so slightly, take the sting out of the game. And as always, their scorer in chief, Shane Mallon, a player who was given such an exhibition from free and from place balls right throughout this particular game. He again is the man who was uh, steady into himself to have a pop at this one. That yellow ball that we've talked about there already, hugely distinctive. In goes the effort, but it just goes out to the right of the post, and it just goes out wide. If you might have had one fault on Leitrim's performance today, would have been maybe the amount of opportunities that they failed to convert, the, the ratio of uh, chances to conversions maybe leaving a little bit to be desired. Yeah, it is, and it is their only fault, we have to say, but uh, definitely it is something they will be disappointed with. Shane Mallon now two wides uh, in a row there, when there were options in the square possibly, but again it's a comfortable enough lead so they can afford it at the moment and the forward line has been prolific all afternoon Rory King back in there again a, a physical handful for the Longford defence to try and deal with and just look at this they're looking to create more opportunities there inside and again the whistle sounds from the from the match official well I suppose the, the lucky thing from a Leitrim perspective from the management perspective is that they've got so many different variations so many strong physical players they can deploy on the edge of the square and uh, that's something that's troubled Longford as well I suppose the, the tactical switches the movement of the Leitrim forward line the changes in personnel somewhat difficult in a competition like this where the dynamics are changing on a continuous basis difficult maybe to stick to a game plan yeah the space they're creating out the field has has allowed the forwards to kind of stick in near the goal and that's where the danger is we've seen Cormac White getting two goals from rebounds and that's where the danger comes from Cormac White has just tapped another one over the bar there for the uh, Leitrim team. So certainly at this stage now, they're moving nicely up the scoring charts all the time, leading by 2.18 to 4 points here in Bordnamon or Connor Park in Tullamore. It's a commanding lead for Leitrim at this particular moment in time, one that they'll be absolutely delighted with. Ball broken in again there from that puck out. Longford try as they might, looking for possession again, just finding it difficult to get it. And again, there's going to be, I suppose, a, a free here for the Longford team. And it's going to be a free that will be taken by Adam Murray, one of the players who's uh, still sticking manfully to his task there. Yeah, we saw tempers flaring there just momentarily. Longford are getting frustrated. But if there's any man who can who can keep the heads up, it's, it's this Adam Murray. Adam Murray, once again, a long delivery on this one, dropping it down. Again, it'll land about 21, 40 metres out there from the... Leitrim goal, primary possession one inside here by the Longford full forward Connor Leonard on a yellow card already, plays that one in along the inline, out over the line it goes and wide and really as the game wears on and understandably so for these young Longford lads, you can sense it in their body language, it's, it's a difficult ask for them to keep going. Yeah, it is frustrating for them, that was probably only their second scoring opportunity of the second half and unfortunately that one went wide as well. Leitrim meanwhile on the counter-attack once again themselves and they're coming forward here with Shane Wren 
Wren has pushed into a good position here. They've got managed to free up a number of players. The intelligent running again of Shane Mallon there for all to see. Can he provide another finish here? This one drops short inside. Gallagher under some pressure on his own goal line there, the Longford goalkeeper. But the uh, Longford netminder, the custodian, is able to deal with it in the end. Yeah, Matthew Farrell is after uh, signalling for a free out now for Longford. So, you know, it, is, it just shows that they are capable of, of, of dealing with, with the threat of, of the Leitrim full forward line. We saw another great block on, on Shane Mallon when he, was, when he was attempting his shot there. So they're, they're not giving up in this game. Change has been made all the time by Longford. I see they're going to be bringing back in Jacob uh, Crossan coming in for the closing stages as well of this match to see if he can make an impact here. We've played over 51 minutes. Obviously, the weather conditions telling a little bit there as well. And interesting to note the way the players are being deployed by the two respective management teams. Here comes the puck out from the goalkeeper, Daniel Gallagher, dropping this one in round that midfield area again. But there is Thomas McNabolia to read the situation. That Longford half back line have uh, been so alert to get it drop short, goalkeeper deals with it well in fairness to Dalian Gallagher, he put the mistake of the concession of that second goal behind him and has continued on in impressive form throughout the match, gets the clearance away to Donald Sheehan, Sheehan again looks to see if there's any options available on this near side but nobody there for Longford, instead it's Owen McLaughlin for Leitrim McLaughlin moving towards the 45 metre line, he's been afforded the space to have a go at this one but again it's drifted out to the lift of the bus and again it's drifted out wide it's just becoming all too easy for Leitrim at this stage. Yeah, you can just see that that Longford are tired now there was no player within 20 yards of Owen McLaughlin there when he picked up possession and an easy run for through to him, through for him and unfortunately he just couldn't end the finish well, once more the puck out has been taken over to the far side it's going to be another opportunity here for Leitrim to launch another attack Longford just not getting any type of uh, a fair decent return of possession from their own puck outs the puck out the restart so so important in the modern game but it's just not falling into place for Longford at the moment there's another free there for Cormac White yeah, Longford need to be careful now because they have two players on yellow cards and they're just allowing the frustration to creep into their minds now and it is affecting their play. And again, it's White who got that second goal. He's looking to add another point to it. Well, the finishing <laughs> just uh, not there for Leitrim at the moment either in the game. I suppose when you're so far ahead, subconsciously, maybe the, the, the sight of the finishing line gets ever so closer there. And uh, Leitrim maybe have taken their eye off the ball and dropped the intensity ever so slightly in the second half as well. Yeah, they, they probably have one hand on the trophy now at the moment and, and that is coming into their heads. But uh, credit to Longford as well for the pressure they're putting on them. But yeah. uh, you would expect Cormac White to be doing better from place balls. Here's another opportunity for Owen McLaughlin. Now can he provide the finish? This is better for Owen McLaughlin. That goes in and the umpire is going for the white flag. It's another point there for the Leitrim team. Well, it's one that they probably needed just after hitting a few wides. They want to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Just watch here as the ball breaks for McLaughlin. Took it well. Brilliant illustration of it from the camera shot behind the goal. There's the finish, and there's the point there for Leitrim. Well, 2.19 to 4 they lead at this stage, and they really are in a very, very commanding position in this final as we head for home. Almost, what, 53 minutes and 45 seconds played, and another attack here from Shane Mallon, and another effort from Shane Mallon that sails in and sails over the bar. Well, it's a tour de force now, isn't it? It just shows the confidence from these young Le uh, Leitrim players because Mallon was after sending three three balls uh, wide there in his previous three efforts so to have the composure to just stick that one over the bar brilliant play and they're not finished yet it's Cormac White again oh it's been constant pressure the goalkeeper has lost another one inside and so so fortunate that that one failed to get didn't reach the back of the net either well again it was that long direct ball down but you, you have to have a degree of sympathy for Daniel Gallagher there the Longford goalkeeper it's been a, a huge rear guard action here for Longford in the second half and in fairness to him for his puck outs the options out the field they're not there and Leitrim are winning all the 50-50 balls and here they come on the attack once more and they're breaking forward here with Owen McLaughlin, it's another one that's raining in from Owen McLaughlin, the umpire's a little bit, uh, well, undecided what to do about it and now they're going to signal that it's gone over the bar and it's another point but really you have to have sympathy there for uh, Daniel Gallagher and just look what's warming up for Leitrim, the, the cavalry is coming in to close this one out. Yeah, absolutely they're just stepping up a gear as well, they just want to finish this out one out strongly but it's such clever play from their forwards to follow the ball in constantly they're always aware that there's a goal chance available and they're just they're really reading the play of this game well
You're so right, they've really got the, all the hallmarks of a well-coached and an efficiently managed team. And it's another free over there on the far side of the field once more. It's going to be taken by Adam Murray. Such high hopes for him and the Longford lads coming into this, but they were rocked by the unavailability of a number of players due to different reasons heading into the final. It just came in a bad weekend for them. Murray, he'll drop this one in about 21 metres out from goal there. Can Longford get something just to uh, ignite as a catalyst maybe for some potential comeback in the closing stages of this game for them? But right now, they're still just finding it difficult to get any type of change out of the Leitrim defence there. And that looks as if it's going to be another free. And just look at this, just when you think things couldn't get much worse for, for Longford, uh, Ashley Mazea is coming back into the mix. Yeah, but credit to, to Longford as well you know we saw Connor Leonard playing as the sweeper for the first half and most of the second half but they moved him back up there to the full forward line and he's paying dividends with his physicality every time that uh, Arna Murray gets the ball in there and it, you could just see one or two scores coming for Longford it would be such an advantage for them at this stage but back there once more was Kieran McMorrow for Leitrim Wedigate plays it in towards that midfield area once more the clash of the ash there as well Hurley's going flying all over the place here come Longford now they will be looking to finish here with Patrick Crossan with some bit of style as uh, Crossan tries to make his way up to the Leitrim 14 metre line plays that one along the ground but again no joy easily anticipated and well read once more by Owen McLaughlin who has been immense since coming in and well at this stage uh, Hurley's flying all over the place from Longford at the moment they're just not getting any possession either it seems ball won back again by Shane Mallon long delivery down there towards the full forward line it went but unfortunately Cormac White from a Leitrim perspective unable to win this one breaks out kindly here to Dean Whites for Longford tries to play it outside but nobody again making themselves available and again it's going to be Leitrim who launch another attack Shane Mallon happy to put this one down in round the danger zone breaking ball backs and forwards going in for it falls kindly for Irlit Dolan the man from Longford Slashers bringing it away lovely control by Dolan look at this for control and technique he's 45 metres out from goal he's going to try and show the forwards the way as it breaks inside here as well to Adam Connaughton Adam Connaughton looking to get the ball up onto the stick and it's a free for Longford well I suppose in fairness to them to deserve that they've kept battling away the forwards have won a free for uh, well, some primary possession through the free and it's an opportunity for them to keep the scoreboard taken over credit to them we've mentioned a couple of key players for Longford throughout this game starting with Dolan there what a run through the centre there was no way that the Leitrim number 10 Keane Farry was going to catch up with him there brilliant brilliant play and also we have to mention Dean Wicks in, in, in the middle of the field number 9 there what a what a block down he had on his opposite number Shane Mallon he's been hugely influential for them and also this man Adam Murray who thankfully has shaked off a knock here so Adam Murray is going to be the player to take this free from just outside the 21 metre line his team trailing by 2 goals on 21 points to 4 points here at this stage Murray Gets the ball up onto the stick. Let's fly with the shot. And it's found its way all the way in there. And it's, I suppose, a consolation score. It's a goal at this stage for them. But in fairness, Tandon Murray did exactly what you had to do there. The low finish on the shot. The Leitrim defence are able to deal with it. And Longford have got their goal. And it's nothing less than Adam Murray deserves. We've play, seen him located around the midfield, around his own half-back line, trying to win possession. He's been really this leader for the, the Longford team. And that goal is nothing less than he deserves. 2.21 to 1-4. Maybe a consolation score you could describe it there for Longford Leitrim stung by that here comes Shane Mallon looking for the immediate response but again the accuracy from the finish just not there that's gone wide well they'll be happy enough to see out the game they'll be happy enough to be crowned champions here Leitrim but they've created enough of chances here that could have won two games yeah they will be disappointed with that but you know it's probably not going to make much of a difference at this stage of the game but for, for Hillary Phelan and his side going forward uh, into next year's competition, it is something they're going to have to work on. And that diagonal ball coming in there from Keen Farry again troubling the Longford defence. Daniel Gallagher, the goalkeeper, well, he epitomised bravery there as he was in for it, but the goalkeeper unfortunately has injured himself in the process there. It was one of those diagonal balls, a shot come pass, that really troubled him. Here's the goal at the other end for Longford. Murray, just look at this, low delivery on it hopped inside and found his way to the back of the net for well a well-deserved goal here for the Longford lads but right now all the attention is all eyes is on the Longford goalkeeper Daniel Gallagher been beaten twice in the game so far but he's uh, in fairness to him he's bravely kept going all throughout the afternoon and just unfortunately picked up an injury there and that's uh, something you hope that he's going to be okay to continue for the closing stages of the match Yeah, he looks very uncomfortable there at the moment but you know, it's, it's terrible to see because he's been such a key player for Longford you know, Leitrim could have had 
so many more goals only for he's you know great control with the hurley to bat down on a number of occasions has got himself in the way has been you know really efficient under the high ball as well a number of balls have been hidden short to him so he's done really really well and maybe the score line doesn't reflect that properly well, the Leitrim management team consulting it, they'll be quite happy the way this has gone. It's been some week for Leitrim, maybe not seen as a, a super hurling power nationally, but two titles like this, that's good for the county. One at senior, one at underage. Yeah, it's fantastic to see. You know, these players are all under 17. They're only going to be feeding through to that senior team. And now that they've moved up to a division, you know, there's going to be huge confidence in, in Leitrim. And it's nothing less than they deserve. Yeah, or still all eyes on the Longford goalkeeper here. They'll be hoping that uh, he is able to recover. Just picked up a little bit of a knock from that ball that was going in there. It seems to be a leg injury, maybe that he's uh, that he's picked up as he was trying to defend that diagonal ball that was dropping in round the goal mouth. Thankfully, he seems to be getting back onto his feet. And you know, always a lonely position and always a difficult position to be in today. And Daniel Gallagher, in fairness to him, he's been helped off the field there. Just wasn't too many options available, especially from his own bookouts. Yeah, and um, again, that was just Leitrim crowding the mid field you know there was nothing re he could do really he was forced to go short uh, tried going long as well but it just Le Leitrim sweeping up all day Happy faces on the Leitrim substitutes bench at this stage now as we tick into injury time but there will be a couple of minutes to be added on especially to that injury uh, to Gallagher and a late change needed in the goalkeeping department here uh, for Longford as well they're going to need now just to change the netminder for the closing exchanges of this particular game. No doubt about the result very much uh, beyond question a long time and there's another shot and that's driven into the back of the net and I think it may well have been the big number 17 who was there to finish it off it was Cora Kane he was brought back in well again there was some confusion there after the loss of the goalkeeper the ball was broken and batted back out to Cora Kane and he was able to finish it to the net and that's an emphatic scoreline now of 3.21 to a goal and four yeah Owen Noonan has stepped into the goals there in place of, of Gallagher but there was absolutely nothing he could do about that shot Rasper was shot to the far corner brilliant goal and again I suppose evidence of what you've been talking about all afternoon the way the players who have come in from the bench at different stages for Leitrim well used by the management team being deployed at the right time and that's another prime example of it very very clever play by the by the management team you constantly have fresh uh, legs coming onto the field and they're really showing it their pace and their physicality is just another level to Longford here and Messiah has got another opportunity here to set something more going for them in motion in the closing stages here we're well into injury time the results are well and truly beyond question and fairness it has been for a long time Longford deployed uh, their best resources that they had available to them here today but there's no doubt about it it's the likes of Rory King and Cole for Leitrim who have been hugely impressive here but in fairness to Longford they're going to try and lift the, the siege here for the last couple of moments and see if they can get something going late on but they've given the ball away to Shane Mallon above all people who'll try and punish them to the best of his ability here in goes the effort from Shane Mallon again it goes to the lift and again it goes wide if Leitrim had their shooting boots on here today we could have had a cricket score yeah it would have been a complete and utter walk over but uh, um, unfortunately for them they've they've hit a number of poor wides but it just shows the amount of st scoring uh, chances that they are creating and like Shane Mallon in midfield he's been absolutely dominant and, and Longford just there's no way they can mark him at the moment I presume he'd be a real contender if you're selecting a man of the match at this stage yeah well we have to say it's the best and fairest award so um, man of the match is not just given to, to whoever scores the most or who is impressive on the field it's about whoever respects their own team whoever respects the, uh, the opposition and the and the referee uh, the most whoever just shows the most sportsmanship and there's plenty of contenders yeah, on the field been, uh, yeah it's so so right there's been so much of that out there today on the pitch at the moment and Longford in fairness to them looking to try and do something here late on as it comes in there from cross and that's got a good direction and a good delivery on it as well it sailed in and over the bar and Longford now move themselves up to one goal and five so it's Longford one goal and five Leitrim three goals and 21 Longford getting their fifth point of the game here. Consolation score maybe for them later on. How much more time is going to be added on by the referee? We'll have to wait and see. And there's the full-time whistle. And Leitrim are crowned the champions. They've won this game. An emphatic scoreline. Three goals and 21 points to one goal and five. All smiles all round for the Leitrim management team. And I suppose it's as emphatic as the scoreline suggests. Yeah, an incredible win for them. They just dominated from start to finish. Some key finishers up, up front. But it was the work from the defence fence starting off to and moving it up and just in this middle field they just dominated and um, they just 
squashed every Longford chance, didn't give them any chance to, to, to launch a comeback. We're starved of possession and just fed that into that lethal forward line. And as we say, only for a couple of bad boys, it could have been a cricket score. So many heroes from Brian Goldrick all the way out. When you look at Shane Rind was hugely impressive throughout the two wing backs and Fergal McLaughlin and Thomas McNaborlia, brilliant in the middle of the field. Connor Hackett and Shane Mallon were immense. And they had so many different players at various stages of the game in the forward line who very much uh, stood up to the place. Yeah, and the substitutes as well, Tora Kane, Owen McLaughlin in particular, we mentioned him throughout the game. Their pace their physicality there was just another level to Longford today but credit to Longford they never stopped fighting even running out of defence to, to, um, to, for Adam Murray to win that free at the end and to point a beautiful beautiful score he's a player to look out for for the future so all credit to Longford as well it's amazing to think that Leitrim have into this game with a score of 321 they've missed quite a lot as well it could have been significantly more so it's been a fine display from their forward line but the amount of uh, uh, chances that to create a large amount of those have to be attributed to some excellent coaching and some excellent support play yeah credit to Hilary Phelan who's been so influential in underage hurling in, in Leitrim and as you said his father Paddy before him so the work has been put in there underage um, and, it, and it, it's you know it really is an example to all other counties how to use the players how to coach underage and to feed that into the senior team as well and we can see it's paying dividends for Leitrim no doubt about it all lies now on the uh, Leitrim team as they're having the presentation so they'll be thrilled with that and uh, they're just lining out in the centre of the field there now at the moment the band has uh, still providing plenty of entertainment for them from a Longford perspective you have to feel for the Longford lads here it's a final really where the ball just didn't break their way the concession of the goals were perhaps key the unavailability of players was another major factor as well for them yeah but I think on the day they just came up against a far better and more organised team um, but credit to Longford I mean they've had a, a great run through this competition you know uh, the Murray brothers have been key and just fantastic play players throughout the field from, from uh, Dean Wicks in midfield and also Dolan at centre back you know there's some really really great characters in that Longford team and they'll be bitterly disappointed uh, with the result today but you know all credit for their display as well yeah well right now as you can probably see there in the distance all the players gathering around in the middle of the field the two teams, uh, Longford uh, obviously the runners up, Leitrim as champions here it's something that they'll be uh, accustomed to after the events of last week as well I suppose they're one of the counties who have really put a huge emphasis here on the Bank of Ireland Celtic Challenge Cup here and uh, this will be another I suppose a, a major achievement for them so important for the developing counties in hurling that they get underage success like that, it's a, it's a conveyor belt in many ways to players going on to represent the senior team in the years to come Absolutely, as we said earlier on, seven players were lined out in Crow Park the other day as a result of this Celtic Challenge competition. So it just shows its importance. It so shows how seriously Leitrim are taking the competition and, and they fully deserve the, the silverware they're coming away with, the, the current Tom Hogan. And of course, from a long perspective, there day compounded. I see Daniel Gallagher, the goalkeeper, just off camera, being carried into the dressing rooms as well. So they'll be hoping maybe that his injury won't be uh, anything too serious. But Leitrim's dominance in the middle of the field today, no doubt about it, one of the standout players uh, for them has been Shane Mallon, contributing so much to the Leitrim attack today, his long range free taking as well. And I suppose we've seen so many skills of the game being executed here today that was refreshing to see. Yeah, we saw two Hurleys been broken late on but because of the fierceness of this game. There was huge phys physicality all over, but in terms of skill, Shane Mallon just showed it all. He had a number of brilliant blocks. The space he was able to create for himself, it was just a pleasure to watch. And as you said, his, his scoring ability as well and, and really dominant over the place ball. Well, no doubt about it, the day belongs to those Leitrim players, as you can see there in camera shot, just awaiting now for the presentation of the Tom Hogan Cup to take place. The manager, Henry Phelan, in camera shot there as well. Certainly has contributed his uh, major role in this. Also in camera shot there, Karma quite. What a game he had. Goals at crucial stages as well. Yeah, just key corner forward play there to follow the ball, to flight the ball into the net sense the, the opportunity for a rebound there and twice he got and just flung it to the back of the net uh, off, off the uh, uh, from a rebound so there you can see the presentation to Adam Murray, Henry Shefflin there as well to make sure that the presentation takes place, there will be photographs that will be cherished for a long long time to come yeah as, um, 
as we mentioned earlier on, it's the best and fairest award that's given instead of a man of the match award. And there's one from each team picked. And Adam Murray, rightly so, picked from Longford. What a game he had today. Key leader, only such a young player in his first year of the competition. Top scorer throughout the championship and was absolutely and fantastic. Ballard is, is next up there. And you can see a, a player as well who has been absolutely fantastic today. He's given a, an exhibition from freeze, from open play. And indeed, his leadership qualities there are on for all to see as well. And what a moment for these players to be collecting their medals from the one and only Henry Shefflin. What more could you ask? He's one of our uh, Bank of Ireland ambassadors for this Celtic Challenge competition. And it's great to see that uh, as someone like Bank of Ireland is getting behind this and showing so much uh, uh, interest in this competition. And a great, great moment for these players now to have Henry Shefflin. So the Longford team just going out there now at this stage, getting uh, their runners up medals. Henry Shefflin there leading the presentation party you know so many of these lads for Longford been dominated by the Longford Slashers and Wolf Tones clubs in Longford and uh, I'm sure these are guys that you'll be able to see representing the blue and gold of Longford in years to come just today simply not their day they they ran into a Leitrim team I suppose that were so up for this game had maybe that little bit more strength and depth as well as especially from the interchange on the bench yeah you, ca you can't fault uh, the effort from Longford at all but they just did come up against the better team and and you just mentioned there that the fact that there's two clubs from Longford, you know, it's, it's incredible when you think of, of the, the accomplishment. They've come up against such dangerous teams throughout this competition. And to, for a team with only two clubs to, to, to come to the final of the current Tom Hogan, it's fantastic. And then for Leitrim, of course, they only have the Carrick Hurling Club uh, representing them today. So what a, what a feat for them. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, two counties who are continuing to make sure that hurling uh, continues to go from strength to strength in the respective counties. So right now we're going to have the, the main part of the day as the Leitrim team go up to pick up their middles. Led by Cormac White there. And here they go, the Leitrim team marching up there the steps. Led all the way up there by their number 13, Cormac White. Looking to pick up the middle. And indeed, so many of those Leitrim players have been immense. It's been an all-round team performance. The defence, as we alluded to several times during the commentary, were in absolute fantastic form. Fergal McLaughlin there, one of the wing backs, has been fantastic right throughout the game. Ashley Mazea coming in and out off the bench, always caused Longford problems. There's another player, uh, Owen McLaughlin, 23, who picked up his middle just a second ago, has been brilliant for them right throughout the course of the game as well. So they will have uh, so many players, I'm sure, we will see feature in the years to come including their Pierce Kenny, the number four, who has played well at cornerback, the midfielder, Connor Hackett, been immense throughout. There's the goalkeeper, Brian Goldrick, picking up his middle. Cool boy, rep. Great family hurling tradition running in that Goldrick family. They live just in the Leitrim village area, just outside Leitrim village area, a village situated just shortly outside Carrick and Shannon. Now there's a, a full forward as well who has been deployed around the edge of the square a few times and got his goal and took it really well and I suppose the physical strength there of the likes of Parry Kane, that troubles Longford in the game as well. Yeah, and we see the last player here picking it up is Shane Rin and he's their captain, he's going to lift it and what a performance he had today. He really just lift, uh, led from the back. Here comes Shane Rin and that's the moment that Leitrim have been waiting for. Shane Rin lifts the Tom Hogan Cup. He is absolutely in euphoria with that a brilliant achievement for him the Leitrim team are celebrating they have won this title an emphatic victory for them over Longford so the first title of the game goes to Leitrim and I suppose we probably will have closer games maybe uh, throughout the course of the afternoon but uh, nonetheless a hugely enjoyable opening game on the Clare today yeah absolutely and you know one thing you can say is that we didn't see and here's the presentation Well, the speech there is somewhat maybe short and sweet. And there's the, there's the cup being lifted aloft. Yeah, they'll celebrate this win. It was absolutely fully deserved. Uh, every aspect of their game was brilliant, bar their finishing at times. Um, but their link-up play from the back, as we said, up to the forwards, just fantastic. For such a, a young group, under 17s, they just played with such maturity. And it was fantastic to see. There was no selfish play out there. They always passed the man in the better position. And that's what got them to win in the end. 
Well, there you have it. Fantastic day for Leitrim. They have won the first title here, an emphatic win for them over Longford. So the first title of the day in the Midlands Derby has gone to Longford. Next up, we've got Dublin Clark taking on Kerry. Second half, uh, second commentary of the afternoon coming up very shortly indeed.